Hi guys, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Books Beside My Bed video. For those of you who are new here, I film one of these every week where I wrap up the last seven days worth of reading. And for those who are very familiar with the series, welcome back. This is my reading week from the 19th until the 25th of January. This week I was participating in a self-inflicted challenge where I asked one of my very lovely bookish friends to choose my TBR for the week and it was Meg from Tommy Infinity. My TBR video was posted last week. She did choose four books for me. I did read them all and I'm going to be talking about them in today's video. But they weren't the only books that I read. I did read a total of seven books this week. Six of them were adult books. One of them was a YA book. I read a total of 2,112 pages and my yearly reading total is up to 29 books. As I said, I am participating in my own self-inflicted TBR challenge, but I am also very loosely participating in the Read Your Shelves readathon as well, and I'm also participating in Romanceopoly, which is a year-long reading challenge. The first four books I'm going to talk about are the books that Meg from Tome Infinity chose for me as part of my recommended TBR. So I'm going to talk about them first, get them out of the way, and then I'm going to talk about the rest of the books that I read this week. The first book I read was Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is sort of a literary fiction dystopian type story. It is a 2014 release from Picador and I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. It is a story about the end of the world. The story begins with an outbreak of a deadly virus that sweeps the world and has lasting ramifications for everyone as basically cities and towns no longer exist and people eventually band together in small groups in small little townships in order to survive the end of the world. We follow a troop of performers who move from town to town and sort of their daily struggles, sort of the climate that they're living in, which is quite dangerous at the moment. And there's a whole lot of other stories woven into it. And really it takes a little while to sink into the story. Literary fiction is not usually my go-to and I do find it off I often find it really difficult to sink into the story and I did have that problem here. But I did actually like what the story was trying to do. The one thing that bothered me though is that some of the paragraphs and chapters are really really long and while I don't necessarily always want short chapters or short paragraphs it was quite difficult to follow at times because we're meeting characters in the past and in the present so it does jump backwards and forwards as we learn how everyone fits together and how everyone's paths eventually cross somewhere. And that was really cool but it just made it harder to keep track of things when there was really really long sections of text and you have to wrap your head around that. But aside from that I did really enjoy it. The second book I read was The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinet Cowell and this was a 2018 release from Solaris and I gave it four out of five stars. It is the first book in the Lady Astronaut series. Not only did I read this for the bookish friends to choose my TBR challenge I also read it for the Read Your Shelves challenge to read a recommendation by a friend. The story begins in 1952. Washington DC has just been hit by a meteorite and this sets off a chain of events including a potential extinction level global warming effect so it's I mean it's very very topical for the current day and age and I think that's part of why I like the story. In the wake of this disaster the International Aerospace Coalition is formed and their purpose is to try and colonize first the moon and then Mars so that the human race can survive because people believe that perhaps within a number of decades life on earth will no longer be sustainable. Our main protagonist is Elma York. She is a former World War II pilot and mathematician. She is very very intelligent but she is someone who has always been overlooked because she's a woman and that's really the crux of this story. She is desperate to become an astronaut and to be part of the group of people that colonize the moon and Mars and she sets about trying to get her way into the astronaut program where previously they've only accepted men. She works alongside a whole group of really amazing female characters, both white and black women, and through their trials trying to get into the astronaut program we see how and we, we see the racial differences and the racial discrimination that takes place as well. And Elmer herself, she's Elmer is white and she has never really considered the discrimination of black women before and this book really forces her to start thinking about it. This is an alternate history book. It was a really fascinating read. I'll probably continue the series at some point. I don't know when but it was a really great story and I mean I love anything to do with pilots and if they're women pilots even better. So this was a win. I read Descender Volume 1 Tin Stars by Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nguyen. This was a 2015 release from Image Comics. I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Tim21 who's a robot who looks like a little boy and we meet him after a war between humans and robots has taken place. The humans were attacked by a mysterious robot and as such they've retaliated and they've sort of destroyed any robots that previously exist but Tim21 is one of the lone survivors and he bands together with a 
a couple of other robot survivors and some humans as they try and figure out what's going on and what caused this war. This was really fun. The artwork was really cool. I found this one a little bit hard to follow. So even though it was a sci-fi graphic novel, it was a little harder for me to follow, but I did kind of enjoy the concept and I really liked sort of the twist that came towards the end of this collection. So I will probably continue this at some point. I'm not sure when, but I will get there eventually. I also read Monstrous Volume 1 Awakening by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. This again was part of the TBR that Meg chose for me. This is a 2016 release from Image Comics. I gave this one four out of five stars. I found this story a little bit easier to follow than Descender, which is a bit weird because I suspect that most people probably thought I'd find this one harder to follow than the other. I enjoyed this one. Really cool artwork. It is set sort of in like a 1900s alternate Asia possibly and this story is pretty much filled with female characters. We follow Maker who is a, I think she's a teenager or, or very early 20s. She is sort of the, a survivor of war and so she's dealing constantly with the trauma of that. And at the same time, she has this psychic connection with a monster and she doesn't know who it is or how to deal with it. And they keep becoming more and more intertwined. What I will say with this book, because I loved it, because it is creepy as all get out. Some of the art is truly, truly creepy with some of the characters. The only word I can use for some of the female characters in this is vicious and terrifying, but it was really fascinating and really interesting. I like this sort of fantasy. What does that say about me? I don't know but this one I did enjoy. Now we come to the part of my wrap up that is not related to Meg's TBR for me. So these are the books that I chose for myself this week. I did finally pick up Heart So Fierce and Broken. I did receive this as a review copy from Bloomsbury. It is a 2020 release from Bloomsbury. I gave it five out of five stars. It is the sequel to A Curse of Dark and Lonely. It is book two in the Curse Breaker series. I recently uploaded a spoiler filled rambly discussion about this book, which I'll leave linked on the screen. But for those of you who don't want to hear about the spoilers, I enjoyed this much more than A Curse of Dark and Lonely. And I really enjoyed A Curse of Dark and Lonely last year. So that's saying something. Heart So Fierce and Broken takes place pretty much immediately after the events of the first book. And in this book, we follow the main perspectives of Grey and Liamara. Grey has left Emberfall and only we the readers know why he's done that. So Harper and Ren don't know why he's left. They're very concerned about him. They're concerned he's dead, but hoping he's not. And when we first meet Grey in this book, he is trying to sort of outrun his, I don't want to say fate, but he's trying to outrun his past. And he's trying to do it for the good of the kingdom. And we find out more why, and I can't really say why because spoilers. His path eventually crosses with Liamara, and Liamara is the daughter of a neighboring ruler who is constantly at war with Emberfall. Together they try and broker a peace between the two kingdoms at any cost. Their relationship, because you know, they're gonna have a relationship, was really fascinating and really cool. And what I really liked in this book is how, and I said this in my other video, it's not really a spoiler, but Grey, even though he really wants to try and save Liamara at times, he lets her do it herself. And he's quite active in trying to get her to help herself. And I really like that in a character because he didn't feel like he had to do it. He wanted to, but he didn't have to. And he constantly tells her how powerful and how awesome she is. And I thought that is really great relationship representation to have in a book. I loved this book. It was really fun. The one thing I will say is I found the first quarter to a third of it, a lot slower than the rest of the book. But once you get past that and once sort of the setup and the main action part starts happening, it's a really, really fast read. And I'm so glad that I read it. I can't wait to find out what happens next because boy, this book left on a surprising note. So I can't wait for the next one. Then for my Romance Upperly Challenge for the Square Emergency Services, which was to read a book that features a character in uniform, so police, faris, whatever. I read Disturbing His Peace by Tessa Bailey. This is a 2018 release from Avon. I'm pretty sure I got it on Kindle Unlimited and I gave it 3.5 out of five stars. It is about the relationship between Danica, who is a police recruit and, why is my phone going off? I apologize. I'm gonna leave my phone out of the room next time. Okay, let's try that again. It follows the relationship between Danica, who is a police recruit, and Greer, who is a lieutenant who is also partly responsible for training the recruits. So he's not there all the time, he's just sort of one of the trainers. And they have this sort of, it, it's not quite enemies to lovers, but it's a very antagonistic sort of relationship as Danica has overheard him talking about some of her friends and she takes that very, very personally. I should say this is book three in a series, but I have no plans to read the first two books because I'm not actually interested in those characters, but this one was 
totally fine. The big thing about this particular story is you have some really interesting power dynamics in the relationship because Greer is very closed off. He is 30, 30 something, I think. He's dealing with the trauma of having lost a partner. His partner was shot in the line of duty and he hasn't taken another partner and he's sort of still dealing with things. He's just thrown himself into work and he's a, he's not really coping very well with it. It's sort of weighing him down now because he's not confided in anyone. He doesn't have close friends. He hasn't had a relationship in a long time. So he's really sort of done it on his own. And it makes him a bit of an asshole at times. Whereas Danica, by contrast, is a very capable, very independent woman. She is constantly taking on things herself and doing things to help her family and not asking for help. And this causes some friction in their relationship because once they start to get to know one another and start to open up to one another, he gets frustrated at her because she lets people walk all over her, or so he perceives, and she gets frustrated at him because he reacts predictably to things that are outside of his control. It makes for a really interesting character dynamic, I think. I did enjoy it, it was a lot of fun, it's very steamy. Tessa Bailey is great at writing that sort of really complicated and gripping romantic entanglement relationship type of story. So I enjoyed it. The last book that I read this week was A Teacher's Guide to Writing Conferences by Carl Anderson. This is obviously a teaching reference book. It's a 2018 release from Heinemann Education Press and I gave it five out of five stars. These books are great. You might remember I read the Beginning Writers book that looked very similar to this earlier in the month. Both these books are part of the Classroom Essentials series. I have the Reading Conferences book that I want to try and read in the next couple of days as well. And this one just goes through the process of conferencing with students about their writing and how to encourage them to write more and to go beyond their current skill level by targeting on specific areas that they need to address on an as-needs basis. I really like this. It is a great series. I'm going to be taking this into work. I am going to be buying copies for the school because this is what we need. So these are the books that I read this week. And if you were awesome enough to stick around to the end of this video because I know it's long, I apologize. I ramble a lot. I'm going to be choosing where to start with my next reading challenge, which is my read my Kindle week. So if you remember my goals video at the start of the year, I said I was going to have two weekly challenges each month. One was going to be Bookish Friends Choose My TBR and the other was to read more from my Kindle. And that's what I'm going to do. So the premise behind this, and I might change it up month to month depending on how I feel. But this month I am going to randomly choose a page from my Kindle. I have my Kindle set up so that I see six books at a time with their covers and that gives me a total of 46 pages of books on my Kindle that are currently unread, which is a lot. Trust me, I know. I'm actually going to use an online spinner wheel. It's going to tell me a page to start reading on and then I'm just going to start reading from the first book on that page on my Kindle as far as I can go in a week. So I have my laptop here. I'm going to spin the wheel. I'm also going to put up on the screen so that you can see it and we're going to see what page I'm going to start on my Kindle. Okay, here we go. So it picked page 38, which on my Kindle is this one, and the first book is Royal Player by Katie McCoy. That's where I'm going to start, so I'm going to have some totally random books being read this week. The goal of this obviously is to read as many books as I can to clear some of these because even though my Kindle TBR does not stress me out, I also want to be accountable for reading what's on there as well as my physical books. In the comments below, let me know if you have read any of the books that I've read this week or if you're planning on reading them in the near future. You can also let me know what you are currently reading or if you have any recommendations for Kindle or for me for other physical books, let me know those as well. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're having a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.